Welcome to week 11, guys. We have some sneaky starts, some controversial fades, and an entire top 15 for you guys today with quarterbacks. 20 new listeners, I'm Skyward. This is JWB. 20 returning listeners, you are the absolute best. If you love fantasy football, please make sure that you join us on our journey to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. A quick Fantasy Pros accuracy competition update. I'm currently sitting at 27th overall on the season. We're hoping to improve that. A top 25 finish would be my goal here. Anything higher would obviously be fantastic as well. We have three straight weeks in the top third at quarterback, so we will take that and continue to improve. Let's start with some honorable mentions for your two quarterback leagues or your 16-team leagues, or if you're just really desperate. We're going to start with quarterback 20 in my rankings, Matthew Stafford here versus the Seattle Seahawks. This is conservative given the uncertainty around his thumb, but Seattle has been a passing defensive target of late. They let up 300 yards and three touchdowns to how a week ago. Quarterback 19, Jordan Love versus the Chargers. The next two weeks are intriguing for Love. Chargers, then the Lions being two of the softest passing defenses of late. Love has finished as a top half quarterback, two and four straight, and I see no reason to repeat over the next two. This is a name that may sneak up a few spots in the next day in my rankings if I build up the courage to drop Trevor Lawrence a little further, who I already have several spots below ECR. Our weekly fades this week are going to be Trevor Lawrence, as I had just mentioned, versus the Tennessee Titans. This may just not be Trevor Lawrence's year. With a tough schedule to finish out the season, he may just fizzle out as a quarterback, too. It's sad, and hopefully brighter days are ahead. Optimism is that this isn't the worst matchup but it's middle of the pack at best. Either way, Trevor Lawrence is not in my one quarterback lineups. The other fate I have the week is Kenny Pickett at Cleveland. If you have Kenny Pickett in any format, please go elsewhere. This game is going to be unwatchable. It's the lowest over under in recent memory and deservedly so. He's 28th. That's last in my rankings here. So basically any starting quarterback is better than Kenny Pickett, in my opinion, this week. Let's start our top 15 with Brock Purdy versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. ECR has Brock Purdy at quarterback 13. Purdy came out strong after the bye week. I like him this week, guys. I'm just a step back from consensus due to my excitement for the options ahead. My only regret here is that I didn't push Joe Burrow back further. I missed that fade by a minute where I had to push him back to quarterback 16 after seeing the brace on his wrist. I blame the Bengals for BSing their injury report. I just missed that submission. And I had Joe Burrow here, quarterback 14 at the Baltimore Ravens. They were 32nd against quarterbacks. The worst matchup you could have. Easier Adam at 12. We'll eat this out. Burrow to IR. Prayers up for Bengals fans. Joshua Dobbs at the Denver Broncos, who are 25th to opposing quarterbacks. I am two spots over ECR on this one. He's on a heater. At this point, I don't see why ECR is as low as they are on Joshua Dubs. The added three to four points per week on the ground, plus a month straight of rushing touchdowns, has elevated Joshua Dubs into a near must start territory. This is the perfect streamer. He shouldn't be on wires with a good remaining schedule and a returning Justin Jefferson. I'd have Dubs higher, but we have players I am really hot on this week and the set and forget guys, of course. Respect to Denver as well, who is improving as the year goes on. Quarterback 12, Sam Howe versus the New York Giants, who just got absolutely torched by Dak Prescott. I'm in lockstep here with ECR. I'm hugging ECR. It's hard to not have Howe as a quarterback one, given the 40 passing attempts he's going to have every single week. We keep saying Howe has weekly top five upside, but there's a fall potential here from a talent perspective. Howe is in lineups. I'm totally cool that quarterback 12 here is rather conservative. Quarterback 11, Justin Herbert at the Green Bay Packers. ECR has him at eight, which is lower than normal. This is the lowest I've had Justin Herbert all year. Green Bay is 13th opposing quarterback, so it is a tougher matchup. Last week was great, but I'm taking a step back because of Herbert's overall inconsistencies of late. One thing is inconsistent is Herbert is the Packers passing defense. Due to this, I've got Herbert ranked right in the middle of his range of outcomes. I'm content falling behind consensus on this one. Quarterback 10, Justin Fields at the Detroit Lions. Easier has him at quarterback 14. I may end up putting Fields over Jared Goff before Sunday, but for now, I have Fields at quarterback 10, which is surprisingly over consensus in my opinion. Justin Herbert had a season-best week last week versus Detroit. Teams have struggled to run versus Detroit. Detroit puts up points, and the passing defense is soft. In return, it's a home run spot for opposing quarterbacks. Quarterback 13, as we said, is very conservative in my opinion, but I'll slap him back in line with the quarterback one overall finish well within the range of outcomes with some of the top quarterbacks having tough defensive matchups this week. And as we mentioned with Jared Goff, here he is, quarterback 19. I'm in locks up with ECR on this one. Chicago is the 24th matchup versus quarterbacks so far this season. I finally 
fell dead on with Jared Goff last season. If you've been following along all season, Jared Goff and I have been playing tag. So I will take last week's victory. We're going to go back his way in this one. Chicago is a bottom eight passing defense despite their improvements. And Jared Goff is good at finding his safety blankets, which should be key in this one. Should Chicago's improving pass rush get pressure onto him? Quarterback eight, Kyler Murray at Houston, who's 18th to opposing quarterback. Some two spots over ECR in this one. With the rushing coming back in full off the ACL, I'm happy to set Kyle right back in that top eight. Had Clayton to not come in to rob a rushing touchdown or Michael Wilson had scored on his, Kyle would have finished right at this mark last week. The Texans passing defense is one collapsing of late, forcing their offense to push pace. Kyle should smash on the other side of this trend. To be honest, he may creep all the way up to as high as quarterback six by the time I finalize these ranks. Quarterback seven, two attack by Loa versus the eighth best defense to opposing quarterbacks. Las Vegas Raiders. ECR has him at quarterback form. Clearly a step back from them on this one, but it's no slight to Tua. Tua is the quarterback eight in points per game, but it's seemingly top five or outside the top 15 for Tua on a weekly basis. I'm a coward. I'll admit it. I'm admitting this range of outcomes similar to Justin Herbert. I'm comfortable starting Kyler, Goff, and Fields over Tua. Should you be looking for more safety in your week 11 start? Vegas isn't threatening, but ECR's quarterback four feels rather confidently aggressive. I get it, but I'm not quite there on this one. It's not as much as a smash play as we perceive. I do like Devon HN and Raheem Mostert in this one. Should both be good to go. Quarterback six, CJ Stroud versus the Arizona Cardinals. I am a spot above ECR on this one. I'm right in line with Stroud's quarterback six fantasy spot thus far. As we noted last week, Arizona is a bottom five team versus the deep ball. So expect Nico Collins and well, Tank Dell to crush in this one should both be good to go. This would have been a smash spot for a shock wide receiver, one of late in Noah Brown, but unfortunately he's out for this Sunday. Quarterback five, Dak Prescott at the Carolina Panthers, who are fourth against opposing quarterbacks. I'm right in line with the ECR on this one. This marks our fifth straight week, though, with Dak in our top five. And it's more of a reflection of his performance of late and how Dallas seems to have found their groove more than it does this matchup. Just like everyone ahead of him from here on, except Patrick Mahomes, it's a tough week for our set and forget Kings. I'm still firing up Dak. It may not end up being top five, but he's safely a quarterback one again for me. Quarterback four in a very similar spot here with Josh Allen versus the New York Jets. Two spots above ECR on this one. Uh, last week was really rough, and this matchup may be rougher, but we ride with Allen, who remains the quarterback one in the season. Ken Dorsey being out of town doesn't necessarily put me off Josh Allen as much as it seemingly does others. Josh Allen's been top four five times, top eight twice, and outside the top 15 just once so far this season, despite seemingly struggling to this point in real life. As long as we don't get a repeat of week one, I'll trust Josh Allen in this one for fantasy. Quarterback three, Jalen Hurts at Kansas City, who is sixth against opposing quarterbacks. I'm a spot behind ECR here. Not much to say. Hurts is top three in our ranks every single week. It's a tough matchup, and Hurts isn't 100%, but we ride with the tush push king. Quarterback two, Lamar Jackson versus Cincinnati Bengals. We got 20 points from Lamar, and he survived an ankle injury scare. This should lock in a top five finish. We'll take it. Quarterback one, no surprise, Patrick Mahomes versus the Philadelphia Eagles, who are 30th to opposing quarterbacks. ECR has him at quarterback one. We should all view Patrick Mahomes as a smash play this week. Philly has been a quarterback target all year. Mahomes remains the best quarterback in the league. It's been his worst fantasy season of his career, actually, but this is the get right spot in the Super Bowl part two versus the Eagles. But that does it for our top 15 quarterback rankings this week. As I mentioned before we got started, we are on our way to 2,500 subscribers. And if you could go down and subscribe, if you stuck this far with us, it would greatly help us go and work towards achieving that goal. A couple links in the description you can find. You can find our Patreon. You want my notes for this show, my notes for all of these shows, full dynasty rankings and other exclusive features, including my DMs wide open for as much as you want to bug me. Go check out the Patreon. It starts as low as a dollar a week. Uh, and then we have our clips category. We've taken every single player you could possibly imagine. It's self-explanatory. Once you go in there, we have takes all labeled up for dynasty is what we were thinking lead up into the season. And then week by week, go in there. And if you don't see a recent player take on the player you were looking for, go into the Discord, which is also in the description. It's free and conversations are always flowing. Tag me and let me know what players you would like us to discuss and in what format. And we'll fit them in to the next video if we can do so. JW Fantasy Football, we're just that on every single platform. Go give us a follow, hoping next year we can build upon more than just YouTube and Twitter. But on Twitter, we're at JW underscore FF. The pin tweet has where you can find our full team and everything they have going on. Everyone is doing fantastic work, and I love our team. So definitely go give everyone a follow and show your love. But that does it here for us this week. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you next time.